I know there's lots of people out there who would love to start video editing. They get excited and they download a program like Adobe Premiere, but when they open it up for the first time, they look around at all these windows and numbers and tool sets, and it can be very overwhelming to get started. Well, in this video, I'm going to walk you through the essential tips that you'll need in order to get started editing in Premiere. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Scott, and if this is your first time on my channel, I just wanna let you know that I create tutorials on Adobe Premiere Pro, Photoshop, and even cover topics on how to make the most out of your creative freelancing business. So if you don't wanna miss any of those videos, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you never miss a thing. So with that, let's talk about today's video, which is a walkthrough of Premiere Pro and how to get started editing in the program. So this is basically going to be a walkthrough of Adobe Premiere, and a general overview of what I feel like are the most essential tools that you'll need to get started. Since a lot of walkthroughs can be a bit drawn out and somewhat dry, I was thinking we could play a little game. So I've hidden a golden Premiere logo somewhere else in this video. And for the first person who comments with the correct timestamp, I will make a special personalized video answering any question you have about video editing with Premiere, Photoshop, or freelancing in general, or just whatever else. And I will upload that video here on my YouTube channel. So be on the lookout for the golden Premiere logo and comment with the timestamp when you find it. Okay, as for the walkthrough, I'm not going to go through every single thing about the program because honestly, there's hundreds of features I could go through. I'm just going to show you guys what I typically use on a consistent daily basis while editing. If you've never edited in Premiere before, or maybe you've dabbled in it a few times but need a refresher course, then this is the video for you. Okay, with that, let's get started. We're going to start fresh on a new project, so the first thing we'll do is open up Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, so the first thing that pops up is this window where you can either open a project or create a new one. In this case, we are starting a new project, so we'll go ahead and click on that. Then I'm going to change the name of my project to SEF underscore Premiere underscore walkthrough but you can change the name of your project to whatever you want. And then I'm gonna click on browse to find a location where I want to save my project on my computer. I'm just gonna save it to my desktop for now, but you can save your project to a location that works best for you. And then that's basically it. I never really change any of these other settings, so I'll just click okay. And now our new project has been created and we can get started importing media into our workspace. So the first thing we're going to do is import our footage into the program. I'm going to hit Command I to bring up the import option and I'm going to select all of my stock footage files and then click import. So now all my files are in my project window in the upper left corner. Before I get started editing my clips, I just want to briefly talk about all of these windows you see in Premiere. Everything that you see here is considered your workspace and you can move any of these windows around how you'd like it. Every editor has their preferred setup and if you'd like to see other variations of workspaces, you can go up to Window, Workspaces, and see the different types. There's one for color grading, audio editing, graphics editing, and you can even create your own custom setup, which I have at the bottom here with Scott's Workspace. So going back to our project window here on the left, you can see that I have all my files listed out here. And again, every editor has their preferred setup, and I like to see my files listed as a list, but you can set it up so they display as thumbnails. If you go up to your project window and right click on the project tab, go down to icon, and then select that to change the display of the files to more of a thumbnail format. And this gives you more of a visual representation of each file, but again, I prefer to see mine as more of a list. For me, it just feels a little more organized that way. Next, we're going to create a bin, which is a folder inside of Premiere. And we can do that by right clicking in our project window and selecting create a bin. So I'm going to change my bin name to stock footage, and then I'm going to highlight all of my files and move them into the bin. After that, we can create a sequence. And a sequence is a timeline of your entire edit that you want to create. There's a few ways that you can create a sequence, but I'm going to show you two ways that I normally do it. You can go up to File, New, and Sequence, and that will give you a dialog box with a bunch of options. But honestly, all you really need to do is set the sequence to custom and change the time base to whatever frame rate that your footage is in. In most cases, that could be 23 frames per second, or maybe 29 or 30 frames per second. So I'm just going to leave it as 23 frames per second right now. 
And then you can go down to the resolution size, which is already pre-selected at 1920 by 1080, which is a great resolution. So I'll stick with that. And that's pretty much it. You can spend time adjusting the sequence settings, but that gets into a little bit more advanced stuff for the moment. So I'll just go ahead and click OK. So that's one way to create a sequence. But the second way and the way that I usually do this is by selecting the clip that I want to use and then just dragging and dropping that onto my timeline. That will create a new timeline icon in your project window. And now what we can do is create a new bin for our sequences. So I'm going to right click, create a new bin and title that sequences. And then next I'm going to change the title of my sequence to SEF sequence 01. So let's talk about how to add multiple clips onto our timeline. So we've already got our first clip on the timeline. So I'm just going to grab another random clip here and then drag it and drop it onto the timeline. Now, if you notice, the second clip has a black area around it, but don't worry about that for the moment because we're going to fix that in a little bit. So now we're well on our way to editing our first sequence here. I just briefly want to talk about the timeline. So where it says V1, this is our first video layer of our timeline. Any other clips that we would add on top of that would be V2, V3, V4, and so forth. So putting a clip on top of another clip overlaps the footage as you can see in the preview window right here. And then the same thing happens with our audio. You have A1, which represents our first audio layer and then A2, A3, and so forth. You can also isolate audio by hitting the solo button, which would then only play the track that's isolated. Or you can mute that audio track so that all the other audio tracks are playing except this track. So I'm going to move the clip back to where it was, but let's say that we wanted to use just a small part of this second clip rather than the entire clip. Well, I'm going to delete this and then I'm going to go back to my project window and then I'm going to make sure that the clip that I want is selected. And then I can see that in my source window, which is the window to the left. The source window acts as a preview of the clip that you want to use in your timeline. So if we were to double click on some of these other clips, they would appear in the source window as well. After selecting the clip that I want to use, if I just wanted to use a small selection of this clip, we can create in and out marking points on this clip. So using the slider underneath it, I can find a point that I want the clip to start at and I'll just randomly stop here. And then if I hit the letter I on my keyboard, it will mark an endpoint. Then I'm just gonna randomly select another point and I'm gonna press the letter O on my keyboard as my out point. So now when I drag and drop this clip back onto my timeline, it will only import this small section here of the original clip. So now you can see the clip is a lot smaller and that's because just the parts that we want selected are in the in and out points. So let's take a look at our program window, which is the window to the right. The program window acts as a playback window while you're editing your clips together. You can move the playhead, which is a vertical blue line on the timeline, and then press the space bar to start playing back the clips on the timeline. You can adjust the scale of the window, but I always keep it fit to scale to the window. Now we can fix the black bars around our clip. And the reason this appears around the video is because our second clip is a much smaller resolution than our first one. So to fix that, we can go to our effect control panel on the right. So if I go to scale and type in 150, that will resize the second clip to fill our window. Now you are going to lose some quality of the video resolution here because you are scaling up from 100 to 150. But I would say in most cases, you can get away with a little bit of upscaling, but just try and use your best judgment. If it starts to look all pixelated and muddy, then you've probably gone too far. So continuing on with our effect control panel, you just saw how you can manipulate the video here however you want by using the scale or the position features. You can also change the opacity, which is the transparency of the clip. And then there's also time remapping, which can control how fast or slow the clip plays. And then you have your audio controls, which are pretty straightforward. You can change the decibel levels, make it louder or softer. You can push the audio more to the left or the right channel, or you can reset the panner balance however you like. So I just want to take a moment to ask if you're enjoying this video and finding it helpful, please do hit the like button and feel free to share it with anyone you think might also find it useful. Okay, let's get back into it. Now let's go down to our toolbar and I usually like to keep mine at the bottom right. 
To be honest with you, there's really only a few of these tools that I actually use on a daily basis. I use the selection tool a lot, which allows you to quickly highlight clips and move them around if needed. There's the track select forward and backwards tools. I don't use those very much. And it's the same for the ripple edit tool and the rolling edit tool and the rate stretch tool. I don't use those as much either. But I do, however, use the razor clip tool a lot. And what that tool does is, let's just say we want to cut off the first five seconds of this clip here. Using the razor tool, I can click on the first clip where my playhead is at, and then that will cut that clip into two parts. Now I can hit the letter V on my keyboard, V is in Victor, which will bring back my selection tool, and then I can select the first part of the clip, which is the part I want to get rid of, and then hit delete. Now there's an empty space in between the beginning of the timeline and where my first clip starts. If I click in that area and highlight that empty space and then press delete, it will move all of my clips to the beginning of the timeline. Another use for the razor tool is, let's say that we have two clips on top of each other and I want to chop off the first second of this clip. If I press C as in cat on my keyboard to bring up the razor tool and then hold down shift and then click on the playhead where I want to make my trim point, it will cut both clips at the same time. And this is an extremely useful tool that I use a lot. So going back over to our toolbar, I don't use the slip tool or the slide tool very much, and I don't use the pen or shape tools all that much either, unless I'm creating some sort of graphic or I'm trying to mask out something. The zoom tool will magnify your timeline, but you can also use the slider at the bottom of the timeline to do the same thing. And then there's the text tool, which I use quite a bit. I can just select any part of the video here and start typing in. So I'll just type in Premiere. And then if I go up to the effect control panel, there's a text window where you can make adjustments to the size, the font style, color, and a whole lot more. And then what I'll do is I'll move my text layer up to my third video layer and then I'll drag my second clip out to extend it a little bit more. And then after that, I can play around with the text and move it around however I want. The next thing we'll do is we'll go over to the audio's level monitor, and that's next to the toolbar. So I'm going to move our second clip back to where it was before. And then in the timeline, you can pull down each layer to expand it. And you'll notice that our second clip has an audio waveform underneath it. And that's because this clip has sound attached to it, whereas our first clip does not. So here's a pro tip. If you want your audio levels to be consistent, try to make sure that your audio levels stay in between negative six and negative nine dB or decibels. That's the sweet spot. If it goes higher than negative six, it's going to be too loud and start peaking. And if it's lower than negative nine, it's most likely going to be too quiet. But as a starting point, that's really all you need to know when it comes to audio levels to try to keep both left and right channels around negative six to negative nine decibels. There's one more thing I wanted to mention about the timeline. If you want to turn off a layer, you can hit the icon of the eyeball next to it, and that will make the layer disappear in your program window. You can also lock each layer so that you don't accidentally move anything around that you did not intend to. Next, there's our media browser window, which is pretty straightforward. You can find files and clips and then bring them into your project window if you'd like to. And then finally, there's the effects panel where you can search for video transitions like crossfades, dip to blacks, audio transitions, video effects like blurring the video or sharpening an image. Uh, there's audio effects like creating echo or reverb. There are hundreds of effects to browse through. So I'm not gonna go through each one, but you can spend some time browsing through it and playing around with different effects to see what works for you. But for now, I'm just going to type in cross dissolve and then I'm gonna drag that effect onto my text layer. Now it has the smooth cross dissolve in and out. And then the next thing I'll do is I'll type in dip to white and then add that as a transition point between my two clips. And I'm just trying to show you what kind of transitions you can put in between the clips. So let's say that we're all set and we're all done editing our sequence and now we're ready to export. So I'm going to hit command M, M as in monkey, to bring up our export settings window. For formats, you can select all different types. I normally just stick with H.264. You could even export this as an audio only waveform, but yet yeah, normally I just go with H.264. There's a bunch of different preset resolutions that you can export to as well. There's a YouTube presetting, there's Twitter presettings, Facebook, Vimeo, 
but I usually stay with match source high bitrate. However, you could do the YouTube settings at 1080p or 4K if you're editing in 4K. To me, really the biggest difference is in the size of the file once it's exported. The YouTube, Twitter, and Vimeo presets tend to be much larger file sizes than the match source high bitrate. And then with your output name, you can change the name of your file and where you want the file to export to. And then that's pretty much it. Just hit export and you should be ready to go. So that does it for this basic walkthrough of Adobe Premiere. Again, I just wanted to give you guys a general overview of the program and how to get started editing clips together. So I hope you guys found that useful. And my question for you is, what feature or tool of Premiere gives you the most trouble? Let me know in the comments below. Speaking of comments, I just wanted to say thank you to Patrick for his awesome comment that he left on my last video, how to cut out images in Photoshop. You guys can view that by clicking the link above. And thank you once again to Patrick for his comment. I really appreciate it. And I just quickly want to say thank you to those who've recently subscribed. I've randomly selected a few subscribers here to feature in this video. But if you want the chance to become a featured subscriber, please do subscribe and leave a comment below answering my question about this week's Premiere video. What tool or feature in Premiere gives you the most trouble? And then I'll randomly pick a few of the responses to feature. Also, please check out my social media pages on Instagram and Twitter. You can find the links in the description below. Alright, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.